I'm not a Is everybody going to heaven? This is the question we seek to answer today on the question and answer edition of Walking Through the Bible. Maintain the honors of his word, the glory of his cross. There are a lot of denominations out there that teach that there is no such place as hell and that everybody is going to heaven. They claim to be following the words of Jesus, but the fact of the matter is, that is simply not true. Let's examine the words of Jesus as they are found in Matthew 25. If you have a Bible with you, please turn to Matthew 25. We're going to read verses 31 to 46. If you don't have a Bible, just listen along. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another as the shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of these least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will also say to those on the left, Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in, naked, and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of these least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. For those of you who watched our study of the entire book of Matthew, you remember that this is one of the last teachings of Jesus before his crucifixion. It occurred on the Mount of Olives in private to the disciples. The context actually began in chapter 24 with Jesus answering two questions. When would the temple in Jerusalem be destroyed? That answer included that signs were about to occur, and that would signify that. The second question was about Jesus' second coming, an event that wouldn't be preceded by any signs. It would be a surprise, which is why the disciples were to always be ready. The reason for their need to be ready is explained right here in this context. When Jesus comes again, there is going to be a judgment of the righteous and the wicked. The way that it will occur is all nations will stand before that, th that throne, meaning all people who have ever lived, both Jew and Gentile, slave and free, male and female. What will be going on is that Jesus will separate people into two groups signified here as dividing sheep and goats. Those who he described as sheep will be on the right hand, and those described as goats will be on the left. The sheep will be those who are righteous, while the goats will be those who are wicked. To the sheep, he says, that they are blessed of God the Father and are called to inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world, which is heaven. Now, why was it that these sheep inherited the kingdom? Jesus said that he was hungry, and you gave him food, thirsty, and you gave him drink, a stranger, and you took him in, naked, and you clothed him, sick, and you visited him in prison, and you came to him. Now the righteous will respond, when do we do these things to you? Which Jesus responds, that if you've done it to the least of my brethren, you've done it to me. Jesus taught that we're to love the Lord God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbor as ourselves. That means complete obedience. If we obey the commandments of God, God has promised us eternal life. No, this passage isn't teaching that we can earn our salvation. But it does teach that it does matter whether or not we obey God fully. Now Jesus turns to the goats. The goats are easily separated from the sheep by Jesus. How? Because of what they have done, or in this case, not done. All of the things that the righteous had done, obeyed God, the wicked had not done. Now like the righteous, the wicked too will respond back and say, When did we see you, Lord, and not do this for you? Jesus' response is that you did not do it to the least of these, so you did not do it to me. 
What this means is that God told them to obey him fully by loving him with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength, and their neighbor as themselves, and they did not do this. They either didn't love God by not following his word, or they didn't love their neighbor by not caring for them. What is the punishment for those on the left hand? Being sent away into everlasting fire that was prepared for the devil and his angels. This is what we call hell. That means that eternal punishment away from the presence of God is what awaits the disobedient. So when you put it all together, everybody is not going to go to heaven, for the disobedient will be punished, and that punishment will be forever, just like the reward of heaven will be forever. Knowing this, won't you now obey Jesus fully by believing in him, repenting of your sins, confessing your faith before others, and by being baptized for the remission of your sins? If you do this and walk in faith until death, you're promised eternal life. If, however, you do not, then you're also promised something, eternal punishment in hell. Let's all seek to avoid hell by obeying God today. Well, I know much more can be said on this topic, but our time is up for now. We hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Exodus chapter 3, verses 15 to 22, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Of his cross.